will touch your life in Jesus name your spirit will wake up your soul your body will wake up that's your child this one is there this one is I don't know that child will wake up the pregnancy that I'm not feeling this I'm not feeling that anymore Pregnancy come alive in Jesus' name. The business that is dead will come alive. Everything in your life, everything around you is coming alive tonight in Jesus' name. If I'm talking about you, where are you? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and glorify you tonight. Thank you for the joy of the Lord in our state. From sickness, we have come to health. From darkness, we have come into the light. Lord, you have taken us away from the place of despair unto the place of happiness and gladness. We pray that the great things you are doing, you have done, will never stop in every life in Jesus' name. I pray that this very night, resurrection power, miracle working power, supernatural power, will walk in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Joel chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 14. Joel chapter 3 verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in that valley of decision. Every success you make in life is based on decision. Every progress you make in life is based on decision. Every mountain you climb, every ladder you climb, every kind of place, destiny you get to, it is based on decision. If you spend your life in the valley of indecision, you are never sure of what you are going to do. You can never make up your mind. Should I? Should I not? Will I? Will I not? Others are doing it. Is it my turn? Is it not my turn? If you cannot make up your mind, if you cannot say, here is what to do, I'm ready, I'm doing it now. If you never come to a point of decision in your life, many great things will pass you by. That's why tonight I'm calling you to this momentous time in your life that you will say, tonight you'll be a man of decision, a woman of decision. A boy, a girl of decision. You will find that before long, something great, miraculous, supernatural will be yours. That's why it says in verse 14. 
It says multitudes, multitudes. It's talking about all of us who are here. Because he knows that wherever you are there in the multitude, your destiny depends on decision. And it says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And then he says, the day of the Lord is near. The day of blessing. And the day of vengeance against your enemy. The day of destruction for the devil. The day of giving the command to that evil sin in your life. Get out. And he gets out. That day is near in the valley of decision. I'm calling you to sleep decision tonight. Number one, there is the invitation to come. Just one word. Come. Peter will never have known what is the experience of walking on water if he had not heard that command and that challenge come. Coming outside the boat. Outside confinement. And coming to the wide ocean of life. Walking on the storms of life. Walking on the, on the waves of life. Doing what his father, grandfather, forefathers have never done. Doing only what Jesus could do. It came on the basis of answer, response to that decision. So I'm going to call you to number one, calm. There are many people that commence the start, but they don't go too far. They get tired easily. They have plans. I will go. I will do. I will serve. I will pray. I will read the Bible. I will get my blessing. After one night, they forget. And I say, my friend, you are still where you were when I saw you the other time. What happened to you? He did not take decision to continue. If there's anybody that is going to get to the top of any mountain, I'm looking at somebody. You are getting to the top of the mountain. I'm looking at somebody. What he said others will never do. A man has never done it in our village. A woman has never got there in a village. I'm looking at a man there right now. I'm looking at a woman right there now. What people have never done in your generation, now it's your turn, you will do it. Something new they will say, where did this come from? How could you get there? First of all, I rejoice with you. The joy of achievement. The joy of success. And the joy of victory. And the joy of getting to that destiny. Shake my hand. Congratulations. 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 You will get there in Jesus' name. <clears throat> because you come. Hey, it's almost here. A night when the most brilliant stars will shine. The All-Stars.
The AGT All-Stars, our incredible new version of America's Got Talent. With the biggest fan favorite acts and winners from AGT and other Got Talents around the world. It's like AGT goes supernova. We got the craziest, most viral acts. It's a total spectacle. AGT All-Stars, a meteor shower of talent. You are really leaning into this astronomy stuff, aren't you? It's so good, right? Join us January 2nd on NBC. The American Cancer Society's Hope Lodge communities offer a free home away from home, closer to cancer care. People are meant to be together. Donate to help keep it that way. Because you continue. Look at him. The one who started primary school but did not continue, that's why they call him illiterate. The one that started marriage did not continue. That's why they call them bachelors. The one that started work, company business, I'm tired. A little difficulty. They cannot continue. That's why they say they're poor. The decision to come. The decision to continue. Number three. The decision to conquer. Any conqueror here tonight? I said any conqueror here tonight. I said any conqueror there tonight. You will conquer. Conquering takes a decision. Everything will come against your decision. Look at Goliath there. There is an Eliab, your senior brother. That will say, what are you doing here? If you are the David that can say, is there not a cause? Am I not here for a reason? And you brush every distractor out, outside your way. And then when Saul says, you cannot. If you have made up your mind that nobody can change your mind. And you say that Goliath, I am going to conquer him. Remember, remember. David came. He didn't stop there. David continued. He didn't stop there. David conquered. Anybody there? You will conquer. Three words I'm looking at tonight. Number one, come. Number two, continue. Number three, conquer. I'm talking to you on the decision of the conqueror. The decision of the conqueror. You already know now that if you're going to conquer in your life, it, you, must start, you must start by taking a decision. When God created you, he had a plan for your life. It's not to be a mediocre. It's not to be just a dick and hurry. It's not to be a superficial person. There is a record in heaven that shows that you have a divine purpose of existence. And that it depends if you're going to get to that destiny. There must be a decision in your life. The decision of the conqueror. And this is not something you'll go and ask my friend, should I, should I not? You have your own brain, use your brain. You have your own mind, use your mind. You have your own heart, use your heart. 
You have your mouth, use your mouth. You cannot eat what your neighbor's mouth. You cannot breathe with your neighbor's lungs. You cannot think with your neighbor's brain. If you are going to succeed in life, personal decision, the decision of the conqueror. Number one, the invitation for all to come. The invitation for all to come. You are coming to Christ. I said you are coming to Christ. I, I see you, but I want to hear you. I said you are coming to Christ. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. He is the Savior. He is the Lord. Where you are, there is no salvation there. Where you are, there is no rest of mind there. Where you are, there's too much anxiety. There's too much worry. There's too much oppression. There's too much affliction. There's so many failures around you. He says, get up out of that place. The people that surround you, they moderate and they modify and they kind of influence your thinking. If you're in the midst of sinners, you'll be sinning like them. If you're the solitary single person among smokers, you'll soon begin to smoke. If you're only one innocent person among guilty people, condemned people, you'll soon be guilty yourself. If a clean person, hygienic person, but you are living in the midst of the people that only chew their chew stick only once a month, you will soon copy them. If you're a clean person, that normally you take your bath. If you're living in the midst of people that wash only at Christmas and Easter, you soon begin to do the same thing. You are not, that's not your group. That's not your class. You are made for the mountain top. You are made for heaven. You are made for glory. You are made for a high destiny. That's why Jesus said, come. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy lady. Look at how you have been laboring. You try your best. I want to be good. How good are you now? I want to be righteous. How righteous are you now? I want to be this and that. My friend, time is going. 30 years gone already. 37 years gone already. Look at where you are. Another 10 years will come now. Why don't you come to Jesus tonight? Let him forgive your sin. Let him take your condemnation away. Let him take hold of your hand. And then begin to walk in the direction of going up. So that today will be a day of the beginning of a bright future in your life. That's why he's calling upon you. And it takes a decision. The invitation for all to come. It says, come unto me. Because he knows what you can do with your life. 
that car that is broken down, wrecked, Jesus Christ will take that car of your life. He'll make it brand new. The world wants to make you a doormat. They want to be walking on you and rubbing their shoes on you and all the dirty things in your life they want to deposit in your life. He said, come out of that place. Get out of that place. You don't belong there. God made you in his own image. He wants to make something beautiful out of your life. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady. And then he says, I will. And when he says, I will, Satan cannot say no. When he says, I will, demon cannot say no. And I will give you rest. Number one, invitation for all to come. And that takes a decision from you. You'll take that decision. Your life will never be the same. You will mark this day down. The day you made up your mind. The day you took a decision. Lord Jesus, I come. Lord Jesus, I come. My Savior, I come to you. Rest will come to your soul. Restoration will come unto you. New life will come unto you. Number one, come. Number two, continue. Continue. Have you seen those unfinished buildings in some of your towns? Great foundation. Great plan. But now, all the weeds are grown around that unfinished building. The reptiles and the snakes and the different, different uh, kind of lizards, they are now, they ha that's their habitation now. And the people of the dark, uh, of the dark world, that's where they now hold their whatever they hold. Everybody passes there and nobody wants to drop any good thing in that place. It was a good plan, a good building. A great architect made the plan of that building. There were resources to build that building. But it's an unfinished building. Why? The builders did not continue. There are many people in this life they're like unfinished products. They started, they didn't continue. They attended crusade. They took the first step. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. You meet them on the street. Unfinished building. Unfinished personality. Unfinished Christian. Unfinished, unfinished man. And the weeds have grown around their personalities. All the reptiles are walking all over their bodies. And their Bible is dusty. Prayer life is gone. He's an unfinished product of a man. An unfinished product of a woman. That's why the Lord is calling you today. You will not be an unfinished house. 
you will not be the one that will pass and say, oh, what a pity. It would have been a good building. If something had continued there, you will not be a person where we look at and shake our head that you are an unfinished product. Point number two, the identification of those who continue. When the angels look at you and they know that you came and you are continuing. You came to Christ. You came to salvation. You came into eternal life. You came into the light. And you came into the protection of the Lord. And you continue. John chapter 8. Reading from verse 30. John chapter 8 verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said, to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue, salvation will continue. If you continue, healing will continue. If you continue, Deliverance will continue. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Showers of blessings. Showers of miracles. Showers of the supernatural. The explosion of supernatural miracles will continue in your life. Because you continue. The decision to continue so that you will not be an unfinished product. I will continue. What are you? I will continue. I said, I will continue. Difficulties may come, difficulties are not supposed to run you down, to destroy you, to send you back. The difficulties and the challenges will only come to test how strong your decision is. If you show that you are a man of decision, a woman of decision, let the wind blow, I will not go back. Let the storm rise, I will not go back. Let the challenges rage. I will not come, go back. Once the enemy knows that you are a man of decision. And you are identified as a decisive man, a decisive woman. Satan will live your life alone. He will give you great blessings you never thought of. Almighty God will give you. The people who come, but they don't continue, they never get to the final point. They never conquer. But the people that conquer, I remind you once again of David. He came to the camp. That is the first step. The decision to come. And then he saw Goliath. He made up his mind. I am going to conquer Goliath. Every Goliath of your life you will conquer. So he began to discuss so that he can make a way to get there. And then his brother said, no, you can't. What are you doing here? He left him alone. 
the people that have not made up their minds and they want to set you back, leave them alone. When the victory comes, they will run after you. Saul said, you cannot. David said, yes, I can. I can. What are you? I can. I can. They said, you cannot. I say, King said, you cannot.